hormone replacement therapy. Terribly important, terribly misunderstood crime of the century. Crime of the century. Testosterone for menopausal women. Emerging area of research and interest. I think the evidence are quite positive and empirically women respond very well to physiologic doses of testosterone. The research on testosterone for women isn't emerging, it's here. We have decades of data showing that testosterone therapy works, it's safe at physiological doses, and that women respond incredibly well to it. Let's start with the basics. Premenopausal women naturally produce testosterone at levels between 15 and 70 nanograms per deciliter, depending on where they're at in their cycle and their individual physiology. As women enter perimenopause and menopause, ovarian testosterone production declines, and for some women, this drop is dramatic. The symptoms aren't subtle, we've got crushing fatigue, complete loss of libido, muscle loss, joint pain, brain fog, and depression. Now, the medical establishment has been slow to recognize this, but the evidence supporting its use is pretty fucking robust. A 2019 global position statement reviewed all available evidence and concluded that testosterone therapy is effective for treating low sexual desire in postmenopausal women. They specifically noted that testosterone improves sexual function, well-being, and mood, and that at physiological doses, it does not increase cardiovascular risk or breast cancer risk. That's not emerging research. That's a consensus statement from leading endocrinologists and gynecologists based on decades of data. Now let's talk about dosing. For menopausal women, the goal is to bring levels back into normal female range. The target is typically 50 to 75 nanograms per deciliter, the upper end of the normal pre-menopausal range. This can be achieved with transdermal testosterone, like a 300 microgram per day patch or a low dose cream, or with injectable testosterone at around three to five milligrams per week. For female athletes or women focused on physique development, the approach is similar, but slightly more nuanced. The goal is to still stay within or just slightly above physiological ranges, keeping total testosterone below 100 nanograms per deciliter to, 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 to minimize the risk of virilization, but the starting doses are all the same as the menopause approach. Now let's address safety because that's where a lot of the hesitation comes from. The most significant risk of testosterone use in women is virilization. At physiological doses, that risk is low, but it increases with higher doses and longer duration of use. What about cardiovascular risk? A 2015 meta-analysis found no increased cardiovascular risk with testosterone therapy in postmenopausal women at physiological doses. In fact, some studies suggest that testosterone may improve cardiovascular markers like lipid profiles and insulin sensitivity. What about breast cancer? No increased risk of breast cancer with testosterone therapy. Some researchers even suggest that testosterone may be protective because it opposes estrogen's effect on breast tissue, but more research is needed there. The point is, at physiological doses, testosterone is safe for most women. The issue is that long-term data on superphysiological doses doses above the normal female range is limited, especially in younger women. But for replacement therapy in perimenopausal and menopausal women, the evidence is strong and it's there. It's not a magic.